Hi, I'm Terry Wood from PokerRailbird.com. Welcome back to the Sum of Poker, Sculpting the Game series. In this video, part two of Poker Math Preflop to River, we will be discussing combinatorics and hand ranges. We're diving into the core of poker mathematics. If you've ever wondered how top players can accurately estimate what their opponent is holding, this is where it all begins. We're going to break down. How many combinations of hands your opponent could have? Why understanding ranges is the gateway to next level decision making? And how to use these tools to spot mistakes, sniff out bluffs, or get maximum value when you're ahead? This video builds on the fundamentals from part one and gets us one step closer to mastering the entire decision making process from pre flop to river. Let's jump in. Combinatorics might sound like a fancy math term, but in poker, it's a tool you can use to elevate your strategy. Let's break it down in a way that's both simple and practical. There are 1,326 possible two-card combinations in a standard deck of 52 cards. These combinations form the foundation of poker math. Let's break them into three main categories. Suited hands, 312 combinations, 24%. Paired hands, 78 combinations, 6%. Unsuited hands, 936 combinations, 70%. Understanding these frequencies is key to grasping how often certain types of hands occur. For example, pocket pairs only appear 6% of the time, so the next time someone says they always get pocket pairs, you'll know better. To change your viewpoint, you must change your point of view. Let's look at starting hands from a different angle, not just as combinations, but as categories of potential playability. You will be dealt hands that could potentially form a straight 41% of the time. About 14% of the time, you'll have hands that can make a flush, straight, or even a straight flush, and about 10% of the time you'll have a flush draw. This puts your total suited hand probability at 24%. You'll be dealt the prized pocket pair 6% of the time, while 29% of your hand will be unplayable from a mathematical viewpoint. These numbers can transform how you think about starting hands. Instead of just folding or playing based on rigid rules, you'll start seeing how likely certain hands are to develop into something strong and when to take calculated risks. Let's zoom in on some specific combinations. Take ace-king off suit. It has 12 possible combinations, while ace-king suited only has four. This makes a total of 16 possible combinations of ace-king. Understanding these frequencies helps you assess the likelihood that an opponent holds a particular hand based on their actions. And what about pocket pairs? There are six possible combinations of any specific pair, like pocket kings. That knowledge is crucial when narrowing down an opponent's range. Knowing the numbers is just the beginning. Next, we'll explore how to apply combinatorics in real-world situations to assess hand ranges and make better decisions. But if you want to dive even deeper into the math behind hand combinations and combinatorics, check out our in-depth article on PokerRailbird.com. It's packed with examples and tools to help you master this critical poker concept. You'll find the link in the video description. Let's bring combinatorics to life with some real-world examples. By seeing how these calculations play out at the table, you'll understand just how powerful this tool can be in making smarter decisions. You're in a hand where the flop comes nine of hearts, five of hearts, and two of clubs. You suspect your opponent is chasing a flush draw. Let's refine their range and calculate the number of combinations. Given our opponent's tight aggressive tendencies, we'll narrow their range to stronger suited hands such as ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-ten, and Broadway connectors like king-queen, king-jack, king-ten, queen-ten, queen-jack, and jack-ten along with suited connectors down to 7-6. We exclude weaker hands, such as 10-6 of hearts, and any combinations involving cards already on the board, like 9-8 of hearts or 6-5 of hearts. When assigning ranges, it's crucial to account for player type, in this case, a tag player, who is unlikely to include weaker suited hands in their pre-flop range. If we were playing against a loose, aggressive player, we would widen the potential range. Based to our analysis, we have the following flush draw hand combinations. High suited cards for combinations. Broadway suited hands, six combinations. Suited connectors, two combinations. 
This analysis leaves us with 12 possible flush draw combinations and hearts. By refining their range based on tendencies like their tag playing style and the board texture, you gain a clearer picture of their likely hand strength. But it's essential to remember that poker is a game of incomplete information. While combinatorics helps identify potential flush draws, your opponent's range isn't limited to draws. They may also hold premium made hands like pocket jacks, tens, or aces. If the turn brings another heart, you'll need to reassess whether they were even on a flush draw to begin with. This is where other tools like betting pattern analysis, player tendencies, and board texture evaluation become critical. Math alone isn't the end-all be-all of range calculations. It's a starting point. Combining it with keen observation and adaptive thinking gives you a more accurate read. This is exactly why we emphasize tools, not rules. Poker is situational, and by using multiple tools, you can make smarter, more dynamic decisions that adjust to the realities of the game. Assessing pocket pairs. The flop comes the eight of spades, four of diamonds, and the two of clubs, and we suspect our opponent could have a pocket pair matching one of these rings. Let's break down the possibilities using combinatorics and probabilities to refine their range. While pocket pairs can lead to powerful hands, it's critical to understand the math behind how often they actually improve. The probability of flopping a set with any pocket pair is just 11.8%, or 7.47 to 1 odds. This means that even if your opponent holds a pocket pair, they'll only hit a set about once every nine times they see a flop. Consider how combinatorics further narrows the range. Since one of each rank, 8, 4, and 2, is already on the board, the combinations for pocket 8s, 4s, and 2s are reduced by half, from 6 to 3 each. This leaves only 9 total combinations for these 3 ranks combined. This is why understanding combinatorics and probabilities together is so important. It helps you balance realistic expectations with actionable insights. For example, if your opponent continues betting aggressively on the turn, you'll need to reassess whether they're representing a set or another strong holding based on their tendencies, betting patterns, and how the board develops. With these tools, you can make smarter decisions about whether to fold, call, or raise, even in the face of uncertainty. Evaluating the straight possibility. The flop comes the queen of spades, jack of spades, and nine of diamonds, and your opponent bets aggressively. Let's use combinatorics and player profiling to evaluate their likely hand strength, focusing on whether they might hold king 10 for a made straight or another strong hand. There are four possible combinations of king 10 suited, king of spades, 10 of spades, king of hearts, 10 of hearts, king of diamonds, 10 of diamonds, king of clubs, 10 of clubs. And there are 12 offsuit combinations, bringing the total possible combinations of king 10 to 16. If the opponent holds king 10, they flopped the nut straight, making their aggressive bet a value bet, not a bluff. And if they hold the king 10 of spades, they also flopped the second nut flush draw and a straight flush draw. Combinatorics tells us there are up to 16 possible combinations of king 10 they could be holding. However, we must also consider their pre-flop tendencies. For instance, a tight aggressive player might avoid playing king 10 off suit in certain positions, reducing the likelihood further. Now, let's analyze their betting line. A tag player who flopped the nuts with king 10 might opt to check the flop rather than bet aggressively. On a wet board like Queen of Spades, Jack of Spades, and the Nine of Diamonds, checking allows them to disguise the strength of their hand and set up larger value bets on later streets, especially if the turn blanks and flush draws miss. This is a classic tag strategy, trap opponents into committing chips when they're drawing dead or nearly so. In contrast, an immediate aggressive bet on the flop often suggests a different type of holding. They could have a strong draw like Ace of Spades, King of Spades, or Ace of Spades, Ten of Spades, or a made hand like a set of Queens, Jacks, or Nines, or even a bluff leveraging the board's scare cards. This is where combinatorics alone isn't enough. You need to evaluate the player's tendencies, the board texture, and their specific line of action to refine their range. Applying deductive and inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning, based on their immediate bet, 
we can deduce that they're less likely to hold king-10 because a tag player would typically take a more cautious line with the nuts on this board. Inductive reasoning. From past hands, we know this opponent often bets aggressively with strong draws and made hands, but rarely bluffs without equity. This suggests their range includes ace of spades, king of spades, sets, or even two pair hands, but not necessarily king-10. If we believe they're holding king-10, folding or calling cautiously becomes the best option depending on pot odds and equity. However, if we determine their range includes strong draws or overvalued made hands, raising to apply pressure might be effective. As always, the key is to stay adaptable and refine your decisions based on new information as the hand progresses. Combinatorics is a powerful tool for narrowing ranges, but it must be complemented by logical reasoning and observation. In this example, understanding the likely betting patterns of a tag player helped us refine their range and respond more effectively. This is why we emphasize tools, not rules. No single method can give you the full picture in poker. If you've ever watched poker videos or games on TV, you've probably heard a commentator say something like, he holds a blocker to the opponent's straight draw. Blockers are an important concept in poker strategy, but they're just one piece of the puzzle. As we always emphasize, poker is about using all your tools, not relying on a single piece of information to make decisions. For example, some players will play hands like ace anything on the assumption that they're the only one at the table with an ace. While this might sometimes be correct, it's incorrect about 67.5% of the time in a nine-handed game. The same principle applies to other ranks. Blockers reduce the likelihood of certain hands, but they don't eliminate possibilities. This is why it's crucial to correlate blockers with other tools, such as observation, player profiling, and betting patterns, to refine your reads and make better decisions. Rank-based blockers, reducing probabilities. When you hold specific cards, you reduce the probability that opponents hold hands involving those ranks, but you don't eliminate the possibility entirely. For example, on a flop of Queen of Spades, Ten of Diamonds, and Jack of Hearts, if you hold Ace of Clubs and the King of Clubs, you reduce the likelihood of another player holding Ace-King, because one of the four Aces and one of the four Kings are accounted for in your hand. However, this doesn't prevent someone else from holding Ace-King, as 12 combinations remain in the deck. In terms of probability, there's roughly a 15% chance of being dealt any specific card. While blockers reduce the number of possible combinations involving your cards, they never guarantee opponents don't hold certain hands. The key to using blockers effectively is to combine them with other tools. Simply knowing you block certain hands is not enough. You must consider the broader context and probabilities at play. For instance, if the flop is Queen of Hearts, Ten of Hearts and Jack of Hearts, and your opponent is betting aggressively, your Ace of Hearts and King of Spades not only blocks critical flush draw combinations, but also provides valuable insight into their range. While there is always the possibility of a made straight, consider the probabilities. The odds of flopping a straight are dependent upon what kind of straight you are drawing to, such as in the middle connectors, the odds are about 77.5 to 1 making it a rare scenario. If you're drawing to a gap straight, the odds are considerably worse. Similarly, the odds of flopping a flush are about 121 to one, which means hands like two pair, top pair with a strong kicker, or even a low ranking flush are often more likely in these situations. When analyzing an aggressive bet on a board like this, ask yourself, is your opponent truly representing a made hand, or are they trying to protect a more vulnerable holding? Use blockers as a starting point to narrow their potential range, but always weigh this information against player tendencies, board texture, and betting patterns to refine your decision-making. This is why we emphasize poker tools, not rules. Blockers are an essential piece of the puzzle, but they must be paired with observation, profiling, and situational awareness to unlock their full strategic potential. Blockers reduce the probability of an opponent holding certain hands, but don't guarantee they don't have them, except in suit-specific scenarios where blockers eliminate certain combinations entirely. Suit-specific blockers are particularly valuable in evaluating flush draws or suited combinations, while rank-based blockers provide a more general reduction in probabilities. 
Use blockers as part of a broader toolkit, combining them with other strategic tools to make more informed decisions at the table. Combinatorics is a powerful tool in poker, but it's not foolproof. Many players misuse or misinterpret its application, leading to costly errors at the table. In this section, we'll break down the most common mistakes and how you can avoid them to refine your strategy and make smarter decisions. 1. Overlooking player tendencies. Mistake. Treating combinatorics as a standalone solution without factoring in your opponent's style. Why it matters. Ignoring player tendencies leads to overly broad or narrow ranges that don't reflect reality. Solution. Adjust ranges based on opponent tendencies. For example, note if your opponent overvalues suited hands, including wheat combinations like 8-3 suited. There is a good portion of players that overemphasize suitedness and will play any two suited cards from any position. 2. Misinterpreting frequency and probability. Mistake. Confusing the number of combinations with the likelihood of those hands being played. Why it matters. Not all hands within a range are equally likely, and raw combination counts can mislead your analysis. Solution. Refine hand frequencies based on your opponent's position, tendencies, and betting patterns. 3. Neglecting range dynamics. Mistake. Treating a range as static throughout the hand. Why it matters, a range evolves with every street, as new cards and betting actions provide additional information. Solution, continuously refine ranges as the hand progresses, incorporating new data like board cards, bet sizing, and opponent behavior. 4. Failing to account for multi-way dynamics. Mistake, applying combinatorics as if the pot were heads up when multiple players are involved. Why it matters, Multiway pots create overlapping ranges, amplifying the probability of someone holding a premium hand or strong draw. Solution. Widen your range assumptions when facing multiple opponents and adjust your strategy accordingly. 5. Misjudging made hands versus draws. Mistake. Assuming an opponent's bet represents a draw without considering the possibility of a made hand. Why it matters. Misidentifying whether an opponent's hand is made or still drawing directly impacts your decision-making. Solution. Use combinatorics alongside inductive reasoning, considering player tendencies, position, and bet sizing to distinguish between made hands and draws. 6. Losing sight of the bigger picture. Mistake. Over-relying on combinatorics without incorporating other tools like pot odds, implied odds, and emotional discipline. Solution. Combine combinatorics with other tools to build a comprehensive strategy. This is why we emphasize tools, not rules at PokerRailbird.com. Combinatorics is an essential tool for hand reading, but it's most effective when integrated with player profiling, observation, and board analysis. Avoid these common mistakes, and you'll elevate your ability to make informed decisions, outthink your opponents, and capitalize on every edge at the table. Combinatorics is one of the most powerful tools in a poker player's arsenal, offering a structured way to analyze potential hands and refine your decisions. But, like all tools, it's only as effective as the person using it. By understanding how blockers, player tendencies, board texture, and probabilities intertwine, you can move beyond rigid rules and make decisions rooted in logic and adaptability. Poker is a game of incomplete information, and tools like combinatorics help reduce uncertainty, empowering you to outthink your opponents. That wraps up this breakdown of combinatorics, hand ranges, and blockers. We've covered a lot of ground here, and I know it can feel a little overwhelming at first. But once you start recognizing these patterns at the table, it becomes second nature, and you'll start seeing the game in a whole new light. In the next video, Poker Math Fundamentals, Pre-flop to river part three, we will be discussing pot odds, hand probabilities, and drawing decisions, and we'll take these tools even further. You'll learn how to calculate pot odds on the fly, make smart decisions with draws, and stop leaving chips on the table. Want to go even deeper? Visit PokerRailbird.com. The full companion article is waiting for you there. Links in the description below. If you found this video helpful, give it a like subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. We've got much more coming your way. I'm Terry Wood. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the tables.